Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. We're into June, which means contract talks and free agent targets and all of that is coming down the pike, especially with the Stanley Cup final now set between the Florida Panthers and the Edmonton Oilers. But there's one name that still has a year left on his deal that I want to talk about, and his name's not Sidney Crosby. I think we all know that that deal is going to get done sometime in the next couple of months to extend his stay in Pittsburgh, probably indefinitely. But let's talk about another important piece to the Pittsburgh Penguins' near future and short-term future, and that's Marcus Pedersen. Pedersen's been the Penguins' best defensive defenseman for the past few seasons. If you look at last season alone, he played in all 82 games, which means he won the coveted Iron Penguin Award, which we give out at the Tip of the Iceberg podcast every year to whichever players perform in all 82 games. So Pedersen was part of that list this year. He set career highs in goals with four, points with 30, and in plus minus with a plus 28. And the only reason I bring that up, because anybody who's listened to this show knows I'm not huge on plus minus, but whenever it is so drastic as far as above the plus minus, above even, and also above what he had previously done, which is what Marcus Pedersen did in the 2023-24 season, that's when it's notable. His previous career high was a plus 13. So to jump from a plus 13 to a plus 28 uh, was an impressive feat, and it certainly adds to his resume from last season. Not only that, he was the steadying force for both Eric Carlson and Chris Letang. I don't think anybody can dispute the fact that whenever they were paired with Pedersen, they fared a lot better than when they were paired with anybody else. Ryan Graves, um, who else was up there? P.O. Joseph got a couple opportunities for with both as well. So Pedersen, all in all, had himself another really good season. And barring a miraculous addition this summer, he's going to be the best defensive defenseman on the Penguins next season as well. And that's a contract year. And that's where we come to today. He's entering a contract year next season. I think personally, the Penguins should look to lock him down this summer because of multiple reasons. One, you need to make sure you have your key defensive defenseman locked in if you want to win Stanley Cups in the next couple of years. And whether you believe it as a fan, as a listener or not, that's what they want to do over the next couple of seasons. And a big part to that is going to be bringing back Marcus Pedersen. So there's reason number one. Reason number two, the salary cap projections are only going up and taking drastic jumps from this year to next, and especially from next year to the following. Uh, according to Cap Friendly, the contract projection for the 2025-26 season, which is not this upcoming one, but the following one, is up to $92 million. That's a $9 million jump from where we were this past season. So if you want to get them locked down, Get them locked down with the salary cap where it's at right now. Because the way I'm looking at it whenever I go into my projections is percentage of the salary cap in year one of the contract or percentage of the salary cap whenever signed. And I think that if they sign them this year, that number might come in a little bit lower and it might do them a little bit of favors if they're able to lock him down this summer. So the question then becomes, what is it going to cost to bring the Swedish defenseman back for a longer term. Pedersen's going to be 29 when that next deal starts, and that's, again, the 2025-26 season because he has one year left on his current deal. When you look at him, he's a fantastic penalty killer. He's a very consistent puck mover, limited when it comes to turnovers, but he's also very good in the offensive zone and, and kind of underrated in the offensive zone. You saw him break out a little bit more this year when he's playing with a guy like Eric Carlson, like I mentioned, career highs in both goals and points this season. And the most important part of this is that he's remained very healthy. He's a guy that blocks shots. He's a guy that is more physical than given credit for. He doesn't make the big, massive, highlight reel body checks. But what he does is play a physical game down low, be difficult to play against. He might be better. He might need to get better in the net front, but that much goes for the entirety of the Pittsburgh Penguins defense. But with that style of play, he's remained healthy. He's missed 33 games in the six seasons he's played with the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's it. 
33 games. The first couple of years he came over, he played the final 57 games of the season. And in that year, he actually played 84 total games between playing for the Anaheim Ducks and then traded and playing for the Pittsburgh Penguins in the regular season. He played all 84. So this is a guy that has been very steady, very sturdy on the back end. And with that, I wanted to bring up a couple of comparables and not comparables around the league because a lot of people are going to do that and they're right to do that. But I want to make it a little bit more specific. When I was looking to make this contract projection, I was looking at defensemen that kind of fit a similar mold to Marcus Pedersen, not mirror images of each other, but a similar mold that have been signed by Kyle Dubas specifically. There's two from Toronto and one from Pittsburgh that I'm sure most people are going to know who I'm about to talk about. But let's start with the ones that he signed in Toronto. The first name that comes up is Jake Muzzin. He signed a contract with Kyle Dubas at the age of 31 for four years and five hundred or $5.625 million. At the time he signed it, Muzzin's deal accounted for 7% of the Toronto Maple Leafs salary cap in the first year of 2020-21. He was the Leafs' best defenseman when healthy. Again, defensive defenseman. I think we can all agree that Morgan Riley was probably their number one defenseman. But defense-wise, it was Jake Muzzin when he signed that contract. But like I mentioned, when healthy. That's why that deal ended up looking as bad as it did at the end, and it's still going to be on the Leafs' LTIR going into next season because Muzzin is retired. He struggled with health. He retired in a third season of this four-year deal with a cervical spine injury. Just unfortunate for Jake Muzzin. But I think that the contract parameters apply here. In a similar way, a deal that was signed in that same offseason, TJ Brody, signed at the age of 30, one year older than what Marcus Pedersen's going to be whenever his next contract kicks in, signed for four years at $5 million, which accounted for 6% of the Leafs salary cap in that 2020-21 season. Again, Brody, complimentary defenseman. He's not the guy that is going to be the superstar on his defense pair. He was complimentary. He was brought in to be that steadying force for an offensive puck-moving defenseman. He's not overly physical, similar to Pedersen. He plays physically, but not, again, overly highlight real physical, but defensively sound. So 6% for Brody, 7% for Muzzin, that's about where I was going for Marcus Pedersen, especially whenever you look at what Ryan Graves signed for last year. And that's the last contract I was looking at in this projection. Ryan Graves signed at the age of 28, so one year younger than what Marcus Pedersen was going to be. He signed for six years, four and a half million dollars, which accounted for 5.4% of the Penguin salary cap last season. And he was brought in to be... I don't want to say the number one defenseman on the left side because I think we all agree that even when he signed that contract, the Penguins viewed Marcus Pedersen as the number one. But he was brought in to be a, a compliment to Marcus Pedersen. He was brought in to be able to play with one of the top two on the right side in Latang and Carlson. And whether or not it worked, that is what the plan was for Kyle Dubas. That is what Kyle Dubas envisioned when he signed that contract next year. Now, Graves, we can get into a long discussion about, but as it pertains to contract negotiations with Marcus Pedersen, I think we can all agree going into this, he's probably going to be asking for higher than that $4.5 million. I think that's a pretty good starting point. So with all that said, 5.4% for Graves, 6% for Brody, 7% for Jake Muzzin. With Marcus Pedersen's next contract, what I think is likely to happen, what I think is the most Fair scenario for both player and team in this situation is going to be 6.5% of the NHL's projected salary cap next season because he's going to sign it this offseason. And that's going to be a six-year deal for Marcus Pedersen, $5.713 million AAV, which brings the grand total out to because Kyle Dubas likes to work in player numbers into the contract. It works out to $34.28 million in total for Marcus Pedersen's next contract. So I'll say it again, six-year contract, $5.713 million. Now that accounts for 6.5% of the Penguin salary cap if it were to begin next season, which is the only salary cap numbers we would know, and that's probably what they'd be working off of. But that would be projected if you go with the $92 million that 
cap friendly is projecting for the NHL salary cap next season, it would be a projected 6.2% of their salary cap in the first year of that contract. Higher than Graves, higher than TJ Brody, a little bit under what Jake Muzzin was whenever his contract started. Now, I think it's fair for both sides. It locks up Marcus Pedersen for the Penguins, and he's here throughout the foreseeable future. The remainder, likely, of the big three era, you have that big-bodied number one defenseman on the left side. For Pedersen, it gives him that stability that he's going to be able to stay in Pittsburgh. At the very least, he doesn't have to go through a contract negotiation. I would assume that he gets, at the very least, a modified no-trade clause as well. It runs through his age 34 season, and at that point, you see what you have in him, but at that point, you have also already had six more years of Marcus Pedersen for a grand total of, I believe, 11 or 12 seasons of Marcus Pedersen in Pittsburgh, not to mention the fact that the cap is raising. Just as we go along here, as we project out, it's going to become less and less of the salary cap from the Pittsburgh Penguins perspective. Not only that, but whenever this contract hits, Jeff Petrie's money is going to be coming off the books at the end of next season. That's an extra $1.5 million in dead cap that the Penguins are getting back. That's going to help them be able to afford to give Marcus Pedersen this pay raise from his $4.025 million all the way up to 5.713. So that's my contract projection. That's how I got there. That's what I think is fair. And that's what my prediction is for a Marcus Pedersen contract if it's signed this offseason. If it's signed during the season or next season, some of the parameters change because then you have to include how is he performing at the beginning of next year? How is the league performing at the beginning of next year? Are they projecting to stay on course with that $92 million salary cap projection, which all comes from the revenue of the previous season. So there's a lot of factors at play if it goes beyond this summer, but if it's signed this summer, my prediction, and feel free to to cut this, remember this, and tell me I'm wrong if he signs for less or signs for more. But I'm thinking that if the Penguins sign him this year, my projection, six years, 5.713 million. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Marcus Pedersen signing a six-year deal. What do you think of Marcus Pedersen being under contract with the Penguins for the foreseeable future at $5.7 million? Is that a fair contract for Pedersen? Is that a fair contract for the Penguins? I want to know your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. But that's going to do it for this episode of Iceberg to Go. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this one. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins. Make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, you comment, you do all the fun stuff because we love interacting with our listenership here on Inside the Penguins on YouTube. Or if you prefer the podcast version, you can find us anywhere you get your podcast from. But that's going to do it for this one. Have a great one, Pens fans.